For your teachers, are they kind of the most inspiring to you, or was it just players that you heard on records, or? Combination of both, certainly. I mean, I'll never forget the moment that I heard Lee Morgan for the first time, oh. you know, on record, and I just kept spinning the needle back, spinning it back, wondering what, what is this that I'm experiencing for the first time? So, you know, that was certain, certainly from a, a, a listening perspective, it was having experiences like that, hearing master trumpet players and jazz musicians that really inspired me. But of course, teachers all along the way. I have, I've had contact with incredible teachers from junior high, high school, through college, and still beyond. Nice, yeah, Lee Morgan's fantastic. When I was at Harvey Mudd in the jazz improv class, we did a whole, whole uh, semester on Lee Morgan and Boy, yeah. Impactful player, went out flaming, uh, yes. was shot in a bar by his estranged wife. So not exactly the, the, the way to go out, but really was an incredible player. Pretty young too. Oh, absolutely young, yeah. His recordings as an 18 year old uh, playing with John Coltrane are just really mind blowing that it's someone at that age could be doing that. So we've talked a little bit about your teachers and uh, different musicians who have inspired you. Are there any specific trumpeters that you tell your uh, students, you've got to listen to this person, or is it kind of whatever they're interested in, uh, what kind of genre they're interested in? Or? I like for my students to take the lead, so I ask them what kind of music they like, you know, and if they happen to talk about a pop band, I'll, I'll, I'll mention some related bands with horns in it, obviously I'm a trumpet player, and if you say someone that says I like jazz, then I'll, I'll try to prod a little bit more. Um, I think it's always better if you can um, help someone experience some new types of music if there's some attachment to them in the first place. So mm -hmm. I'll just kind of pick their brains and see what it is that they like and then I'll send them down a path of exploration of some trumpet players that might really resonate with their style or their personality, you know. So you might have a really extroverted person I said, well, you know, you might want to check out Maynard Ferguson. He's a sort of an extroverted type of player, but he's not on my list of trumpet players that I listen to when I'm listening to music, but you need to find a foot in the door mm -hmm. and then you can bring them into the, well, you know, well, there's the Conti Condoli, and then that brings you into the type of players that I'm more interested in. Well, then, now let's start talking about the Chet Bakers and the Miles Davises and the Clifford Browns and the Freddie Hubbards and the Woody Shaws. Mm -hmm. That's where my heart is. However you have to find or help someone along into listening to some certain style, that's what's important. Yeah, so you named a lot of jazz musicians. Well, what other pop or maybe just some suggestions that you have for the people listening to this? Well, if, you're, I mean, if, if, if we're talking trumpet-centric, I mean, you can't avoid the bands like Chicago and Tower of Power and Blood, Sweat and Tears. And then even just talking about tuning into music on television, you know, the Saturday Night Live band has been chock full of great New York musicians, Lenny Pickett, and you can tune in and see these guys come in and out of commercial every time, wailing sax solos. So you just find something that, that is relative to some type of music that they might appreciate, and then all like I said, funnel them into some other styles that might be a little bit more challenging for them to, to assimilate into their playing. Basically, I, I made a commitment to myself to never say no to any work. Free, how much ever it paid, it didn't matter to me. I just wanted to get immersed in the community. And uh, that was really helpful for meeting people, establishing relationships that I could build on both musically, professionally, and as an educator. So that's kind of where I landed in Seattle and then I've just been playing and teaching since. Yeah, I like actually how you're talking about performance almost as a type of music education. Oh man, on the bandstand, you are learning constantly. If you're not learning from your peers, and if you're not learning from the people that are better players than you, it's a missed opportunity. So yeah, on the bandstand, you're constantly learning about yourself, how to interact with people, how to interact on a professional level, and uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it's multifaceted, but you have to be engaged. You can't just show up like any gig and expect to um, get something out of it if you don't put something in. So you've got, you got to be engaged on the bandstand and, and have a commitment to playing at your highest level. And then by all means, you know, ask people questions about how they do things. How, do you, how did you get to play that way? And you, your business chops are so good, but you're so organized. You know, what is it about this? You know, you have to, you have to ask the questions that are necessary to, to move forward in life. Yeah, and part of that is actually identifying that that person has that, uh, yeah. that ability. Yeah. So how, how do you actually identify those things? Well, some, sometimes it's obvious. Somebody stands up and just plays their tail off. You're like, wow, that's, this person's got it going on, you know? And other, others are more subtle. You know, you'll see people navigate a recording session and you've got people that are walking around kind of puffing their chest like, this is my thing. But you know, the people that I end up respecting more are the people that go about their work subtly. You know, they, they're professionals, they show up, they play their parts. They're not touting all of their accomplishments. 
They're really just um, there to make the project as, as good as it possibly can be. And uh, it's not so much a personal endeavor, it's more about how they can make the group better. Those are the people that I identify as really the key players and the people that I want to associate with. I mean, we, we need the people to pound their chest and be advocates for our art and that sort of thing, but I think there's other ways to go about that. And I tend to gravitate towards um, learning from those people that are a little bit more subtle in their approach. Yeah, there's definitely a fine line between look at what I can do and this is what is needed. Listen to what I can do. Listen to what, Because yes. in music, you know, yeah. sounds speak much greater than words. How do you see that fitting into collectives of, of artists or musicians? They're just kind of banding together because they have a, a mutual uh, passion for a certain kind of art? or Certainly, plus there's also safety in numbers, you know? And there's also, um, there's also the inspirational factor. I mean, when you get a collection of musicians, we're not all going to play or think the same way. So there's going to be a certain level of creative inspiration from more people. Visual artists end up doing a lot of their work by themselves, you know? but they also are doing drawing clubs and other things of that nature, and they're out in the scene experiencing as much visual art as they can so they can interact with other artists. Whereas musicians, we have a, a little easier path towards you know, collaboration. But it doesn't mean there isn't that creative lonely time that is a necessary component of moving forward.